Just uh, thanks to our fans and um, showing up like always. They're faithful and um, and then uh, to our military, just uh, for us to be able to, to honor them today in a small, small way. It was neat to see uh, all branches recognized and and, um, and us honor them. A lot of the freedoms we enjoy um, wouldn't be possible without their sacrifices. Proud of our staff and kids. I thought it was one of our better performances in my time here. Um, zero penalties. Should have been zero turnovers. We've got to take care of the football, even our young kids. And, um, two receivers over 100 yards. It's been a while, I think, since that's happened. And one with three touchdowns in Cam Coleman's performance. And, Peyton ties the AU record for five TD passes and uh, got our thousand yard rusher today in Jarquez, which could be more, more proud for him. So um, I thought it was a, a pretty dominant performance with uh, just a small lapse at the beginning of the third quarter uh, by both sides really. And um, just uh, really, really proud of our kids and our effort and hopefully we gain some confidence um, and uh, headed into these last two huge uh, football games that we have. We'll start here with Brian. Hugh, you mentioned Cam Coleman's performance. How much of a spark did that give Auburn's offense? Uh, a lot. You know, I thought we started uh, fast, and any time we – I kind of went back in the open week and just said we're going to go back to being, you know, our the tempo-driven stuff, uh, particularly for this game. and. That definitely gives our receivers more touches and more opportunities. And uh, as long as you stay on schedule, you're you, you can do that. And, and we were able to do that today. And thought we were pretty effective when we when we were on schedule. But to get those receivers early touches certainly starts uh, you know building excitement. I think in the stadium and and on the sideline. Coach, two things today, 12-17 uh, on third down. Uh, also, your defense held another opponent to just over 200 yards of, of offense today. What do you take away, especially offensively, from third down play calling that you carry over in Texas a Well, you know, our third down plan was good uh, today, and we executed it pretty well. Um, and so, you know, we had two weeks to work on that, and it was simple stuff that our kids understood and were able to execute. I think there's a valuable lesson in that is maybe less is more and let's do what we can do and give our kids a chance to, to execute in critical downs and critical moments. And um, we had a pretty good idea of what we were going to get on third down and yardage from, from this unit. Might not be quite as easy for some of the others, but still give our kids a chance to make plays instead of maybe carrying a, a few too many things. Uh, you asked me about defense too. Yeah, I, you know, in my mind, they held them under 200. You know, I know the, the last play there was a lot, but uh, I think our defense, besides the, the one drive in the third quarter, was, was really, really solid. That drive where you guys went 16 plays, 99 yards in the first half, took about seven minutes off the clock. Just, you know, overall the execution on offense in this game. I thought we executed uh, at a high level other than uh, two drives. And uh, the, the one that started the third quarter was frustrating. Truthfully, that wasn't as much the kids as it, you know, we we had two things that we wanted to try in the run game and both were disaster. And we should have just stuck with what was working in the first half to get us on track and just get back into our tempo stuff. and. You know, we want to see those things, and you know, it just uh, didn't didn't work. So it was bad. That wasn't the kids, truthfully, as much as it was uh, us. We probably should have stayed with what had been proven to be working. Uh, the other drive, you know, I, I thought we made a few decisions at the quarterback position, and, I, and look, Peyton played well today. But uh, I do think on that one drive, we didn't get points in the first half. He had he had two plays where. I think if he goes through his progression, we, we stay right on track and are able to, to create more more explosive plays and, and points. You, Keandre, big day for him as well. Just 
But what has he brought to this unit at wide receiver, especially with all the young guys that you guys have, and just being being that leader for them? Yeah, he's a, he's a playmaker, outstanding player, and he's one that has earned um, the respect of that room to where his voice matters, and you can lean on him to to say, hey. And some of our young kids aren't practicing quite with, they're not straining today and and his voice matters and he doesn't mind. He has a way of sharing it that, that relates to them. They listen. He's uh, been an outstanding addition to our program and uh, excited to have see him have continued success. He's had success mostly all year. We probably hadn't gone to him enough. Jason. Yeah. How valuable is it to get extensive reps for Walker like that, where you're playing well, run the offense, and then kind of what you say out of him other than the, the, the turnover? Well, we, sh you know, you get those are tough situations. Um, you know, I wanted to throw it around a little with him because he's got a great arm. Arm strength is really off the charts good. You saw it in the first hitch. I mean, I think he was just amped up. He ripped that thing, and it was a little high and hard for. Uh, for Camden to bring down, but you know we didn't really throw it a whole lot uh, with him. I'd like to see a little more of that, and of course that doesn't mean we, you know, I kind of know what we have with Hank and Holden, and just wanted to kind of see how he reacted in in, in in real game situation. And you know, other than the turnover, I thought he was, you know, I thought he was okay. Yeah. Coach, just a little bit deeper dive on that. You mentioned earlier in the week that. You know, there's a time to maybe look big picture. Peyton was hurt, didn't practice last week. You've gone to Hank Brown in the past. Today you start Peyton, played really, really well, like you said, but there's no Hank Brown. It doesn't come in the game at all. Is it just a case of you wanting to see Walker since he haven't had a chance to play? Or what is, kind of talk about that thought process. Yeah, that was a, t a tough discussion. Not a tough, just, you know, you don't know exactly what's right. It, it, it truthfully has no reflection on, on Hank at all. And I know people won't understand that, and they can make what they want. But I, I'm dead serious. It was really, do we keep? If we do that, do you go Hank at the beginning of the third, or do you continue to build confidence with the receivers and Peyton for a couple more possessions heading into the the last few games, knowing that you might only get one of them in, and if it is one, which one? And and we all kind of agreed. Ultimately, it was my call and. I just I thought I thought I wanted to see Walker, you know, in some live reps before the season was over. But the truth it had nothing to do with Hank not preparing well or playing well. It just you can't get them all in, and really wanted to see Walker in some live reps. Go Brian, and we've got three over here. Uh, you, what does it say about Peyton's toughness? Missed last week of practice. Um, I think you said uh, Tuesday you weren't really pleased with how he's throwing. He goes out there and performs like he did. Well, he's, he was locked in in the meetings, and I think, again, the uh, plan was one that he and the receivers were, were more in sync. Um, I mean, the touchdown to Malcolm was, uh, let's see, that was Peyton that threw that, right? It was. Um, that was one of the, that was the best progression timing for our, what we consider to be our combo world the, the entire season, by far. The way it happened, the timing of it, and the way it was, and so, you know, I just, I, I think, you know, Peyton just prepared well, but also it's not always just the quarterback that has to prepare well. It's everybody has to be on the same page. And yeah, we still will look at the film and that there, there's four pass plays that I know he's gonna wish he would have done something different. And he probably would, I don't know what he was, but, uh, he, would, he could have thrown for a higher percentage today, but he, he prepared well and was locked in the whole time. And he felt like he would play Tuesday. He just, anything beyond 10 yards really bothered him, so we just didn't, didn't throw him a lot. Johnny? You, uh, not a single penalty committed by the team. I'm not sure that's even happened in program history. Have you ever been part of a game like that? And did you see anything from your team throughout the week that? You thought maybe they're a little more buttoned up than typical. Well, I, I don't know, Kirk will have to say, or Shelly. I, I think we're one of the fewest penalized teams in the league to begin with. Um, offensively, I know we are. We have a few on defense and special teams from time to time. But 
Um, I, I, I can't remember ever being a part, truthfully, of, of having a team that had zero penalties. So um, I like it that way. Um, thankful that uh, we, we executed at that level today and um, that we had none, but that's, that's certainly not normal. Coach, again, talk about the energy and the excitement that the crowd continues to bring to you week in and week out, home or away. Yeah, we have the best fans. I've said that. and it's a, It is a blessing, and it also is um, it's something that makes being that sitting in the seat I sat in uh, difficult, too, because if you're made of the right stuff and you're made the right way, you want to deliver a product to them that – that they're pleased with and you want to do it now and that that hasn't always happened obviously and and so it's uh but yet they show up and are incredible and tiger walk and wherever you see them and uh, just uh, very thankful for the support of the administration and our fans and um, they're, they're incredible i've got two more one up here and one over here coach with the offense clicking like it did today with the young wide receivers what does that do for them heading into the last two games well, you hope that it uh, it sure would be nice to see us at next Saturday night against an outstanding defense. I did in the open week spend a little time watching A and M, uh, and they they're very very good on defense, and we're gonna have to be balanced. And so you hope that a day like today with those young guys gives them and Peyton confidence that hey man. Coach, we don't really need to add a ton of other routes. Let's just keep doing what we're doing, and we believe that we can win on these routes, and um, that's what you hope. Um, obviously, we will be playing a higher level of, uh, of athlete next Saturday night, but it's exciting to know that you can show them some proof of, uh, you, know, you see what your work has done in practice, and now you see it in game, you enjoyed that. Let's have that same work ethic this week and, and get ready to try to do it again next Saturday night. Finish up over here, Chris. Coach, talk about coming back into a victorious locker room, going back yeah. in, in there and, and, and sharing a message, a victorious message. What is the energy around the team that you guys have? Well, we presented Jarquez and the old line with a, a football for the thousand yard. That was fun. And we talked about the two receivers going over 100 yards, which hasn't happened in a long time around here, I think, and the three touchdown deal. And then I told uh, David, our highway patrolman, and, and our AD, John Cohen, coming back here, man, I'm going to actually eat when I go home tonight. <laughs> so it feels, it feels good, you know. And I hadn't felt like eating a lot when I, when I go home from when you lose games here in Jordan-Hare. So uh, we're going to enjoy um, the, uh, the performance today and, and uh, get back to work tomorrow. Thank you very much.